Hey, boys and girls, uh, uh, welcome to Tension. We're, uh, we're here with uh, Hugh and Paul, and um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves to get things rolling. But today we're going to be talking about battery trays and a lot of uh, really innovative weight reduction kinds of, uh, kinds of ideas. So Hugh, why don't you uh, give us a, a little download there? Yeah, I'm Hugh Ferran. I'm the executive director. I run the Advanced Development Center where we're at today. Um, I've been here for quite a while, close to 40 years here at this uh, company. So I have a little bit of background on what we do here. Mm, cool. Um, yeah. Paul? Hey, I'm Paul Lester, I'm the lead engineer at Monroe and Associates. I look after a lot of the structural stuff. So looking forward to uh, seeing some of the developments you guys are looking yeah. at. Yeah. Hugh, why don't you, uh, we're standing in front of a bunch we're, of Corvettes. We're in, so. standing in front of the C7 Corvettes. And one of the reasons the C7s, we actually make this, all the Corvettes. We make the current C8 Corvette. We're working on the next gen Corvette. Um, but the C7s, we actually have the tools in back because we're doing some development work on the old tools for this to lightweight the existing Corvette bodies. These right now are both carbon and SMC. There's carbon parts, but the entire exterior body of the Corvettes, the C8, we make it, the C7, we made it. We go all the way back to basically the C3 oh, when wow. we were making body panels for Corvette, us and... Um, a couple other companies make like the floor pans and other body panels on yeah, that. Yeah. So the Corvette has always been one of our core business products that we've had. Hmm. Uh, we are really the guys to go to for class A SMC parts. Yeah. So, yeah. but now it's changing as you pointed out, there's a lot of other materials that are now starting to infringe on right. that where they're starting to be able to make it out of other materials. Yeah, we actually visited, I visited one in a um, company in um, uh, Italy and uh, they're making uh, SMC uh, carbon fiber parts. Yep. Anyway, what I'd really like to do is skip right over to that, the Volt. Yep. So I worked on the EV1 and uh, that's, uh, that was a injection molded uh, part that, uh, uh, for the battery tray. Uh, but everybody's kind of like moved to aluminum and I do not understand why, because with the right material, the burn through on this is uh, near impossible. Whereas with, uh, with aluminum, I can get through faster than you can possibly believe. Oh yeah. People are just, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of, strange thinking that's going on in today's market but so no, were you involved in this yeah you're you're correct with what you're saying but we made this version we also made another version that was for the cadillac that was just an i we call this the t shape yeah t. um but there was also a, a version that was just an i shaped yeah but prior to that we even did the uh, spark this was be predates that one mm. and this one has the tray and the cover this one was just a cover, but as you can see, the base of it, you're familiar with it, was just yeah, basically a right. small flat plate. Yeah. And then they had the uh, batteries in there. Yeah. They were pouch style type right. batteries yeah. in it. Um, but yeah, we made a lot of these parts uh, mm -hmm. for General Motors. Uh, General Motors, we've been pretty much partnered with for a lot of the battery yeah. covers and even boxes. Mm. What was really interesting with this one, this was what we call our really first one development with GM prior mm -hmm. to that. And this one had to survive a 40 mile an hour rear crash. And what was interesting was you can see right here is where the axle was. And so this, it looks like carbon fiber, but it's actually a, um, it's, it's glass and a resin, a monomer free resin system. Mm. And it, it was made up with seven layers for this. And then we would preform it, and then we would put it in and mold this. Mm. Uh, the big issue, like I said, was it had to survive the rear impact of a 40 mile an hour rear so crash. So did you do all the analysis on that as well? We did some of yep. the analysis with GM on this to develop this. Mm. We were in partners with them to develop this. There is a metal tray that does some of the structural support as well because of the weight for this. But you look at the size of this battery box, and then it went to the Volt, and now you look at these, okay? This is one of the Ford battery boxes. The issue, or covers, most every battery box that we see right now is about a meter and a half by two meters. 
So consequently, and, and right now we're making 30 covers for different manufacturers and we're working on right. some different trays. Yeah. So we went ahead and built, it segues right into this battery box. This is our property. We made a production mold, a P20 production mold. It's chrome plated, has ejection, has vacuum. And this is a meter and a half by two meters. And the reason we, we spent the money to build this and we, can, we process this here in our building, one of the big features to having this, I got customers coming in, and you know all the customers, Ford GM, Chrysler, yeah, yeah. Stellantis, right. well, I shouldn't say Chrysler, Stellantis, um, but there's others too, BMW, they all want to be able to evaluate different materials. And I can't do that if I, I can't take a GM part or I can't take a Ford right, part yeah. and run somebody else's yeah. and give it to somebody to test and evaluate. So we built this and we have specifically four different materials. We have more all together. We have over 200 formulations of SMC, different glass contents, different resins. We have a, what we call an 834 material, which is a vinyl ester resin with 50% glass, which is what you're looking at here right now. And then we have an ATH filled material. And that's for the fire resistance. Right, yeah. And then we have also a phenolic material that oh, we really? run. Really? Yeah, phenolic for, SMC. For, I, I guess I just didn't know that. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. that's, a, that's a surprise for me. Yeah. And, but phenolics is old school. What it, is phenolics is. Be before? It was Circuit boards. <laughs> and Bakelite. And Bakelite, Bakelite yeah. yeah. And Remember Bakelite the old was, ash yeah. trays and the old phones? The old, um, Actually, the old cups. Yes. I remember my parents had a set of these cups, and uh, yes. they were all made out of Bakelite. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I just, what has the highest temperature resistance? Bakelite. Bakelite. So we yeah. have a resin system, both a liquid and a powder resin system to, wow. to make bat And we've made battery boxes, and we've been evaluating and testing those. Just out of curiosity, what's the cycle time for Bakelite? Bakelite's very similar to the SMC. So ba rule of thumb for SMC, every millimeter is a minute of cycle time. So however yeah. thick you make it, if it's three millimeters thick, it's gonna be probably three, three minutes, minutes on the cycle time. So do you use the same material for the lid and the tray, generally? Yes, generally, but we don't have to. Mm. We, we've mixed them up. Well, but at the end of the day, though, we, you still have to get that uh, the um, fire retardant kind of thing. So for me, I, I probably want to have the same material so I don't have to try and qualify two materials. Well, but I have, I, have, I have one quick question, though. Yep. What's the differential in price between the Bakelite product and say something that's just polypropylene. It's, it's versus polypro or like a yeah. polyester. Polyester, or whatever. A poly it generally, against our base materials, it probably ends up being around 75 cents a pound more. But the thermal resistance is yeah. so much better. Well, I'm like, just looking at strength and crash worthiness and well, things like that. So. It, the strength is so much higher, and we have data we can share with everybody on that. Mm. Um, can you make it thinner with Bakelite? Yes. yes. So, so I you use less need, material. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. I won't say it's a wash for, for that, but it yeah. is, you can make it thinner. Aluminum melts at about 800. Yeah. The, this other material, we're, the, we're talking about 1,200 degrees. Yeah, 1,200 is what we're, yeah. that's, that's kind of like the numbers it's that we've been It's the holy seeing. grail yeah. kind of where everybody's right. looking yeah. for. And that's why it's going to be very difficult for aluminum to beat something like this. And if we can use Bakelite, and I did not know that until this very second, if we could get Bakelite, um, it opens up the doors to uh, quite a number of different um, applications, not just in automotive. The other thing I like too is these clips. I love this. I tried to talk the guys at Ford into using clips to hold our uh, rocker covers and uh, oil pans on. Um, that went over like a fart in church. It didn't uh, didn't work at all. So well, I think that uh, I think that you've got to. I love this. I absolutely. I don't much care for screws because um, they take too long and they come loose. This will never come loose. Never. Once this is pushed on, it's there. For the duration there's no such thing as back off or whatever yeah. nothing you're so, so what's the bank story with the clips then you got the well here's right where you started with if you look at this cover here look at how big this flange is yeah 
every OE wants that flange to be smaller. Right. Okay. Um, you look at that other battery cover against the wall, there's all the holes like you talk about with the nuts and bolts. Our biggest issue is that causes problems with cracks and other quality yeah, right. issues it, it sets up near a the edge. Rider. And they keep wanting that flange to be smaller, smaller, smaller. Well, the only way to get there is to put clips on. Like Sandy right. said, you no longer have a point load. You're spreading right. the load. We yeah. can make these clips. Right now, this is a standard. We've got a tool to make that, and you can put more or yeah. less on them, or you can put bigger clips. So it actually helps with the sealing of the battery. So well, early, sorry, right. so earlier you were saying this is like a, a generic size. It's for, a generic battery. Are, are yeah. you seeing any any information from customers? They want to go with a standard battery yes. size. Yes. Okay. Um, GM's working on that right now. But they would, want it, it, would yeah. it be GM and Ford and? Yes. It, yeah. All of the OEs are mm. trying to standardize these packs right. at least what we're being yeah. told and what we're working on with some of these mm. well which is very exciting i mean yeah so it'd be interchangeable between a full product and a well not between different oes oh, okay. it's just within different vehicle platforms they're trying mm. to make platforms that they can share all this yeah. but do you yeah. see that in the future maybe uh, um, a generic battery pack going in multiple yes vehicles? i do because a lot of for second life of the battery packs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody's looking at. What do they do after the car? Once it's say well, it's only a research. battery pack that size, nice. if you put it in your house, you'd never, uh, and with solar panels, you'd yeah. never ever uh, use a nickel off of. Yeah. Uh, but once it's at a point where it only gets to like seventy percent of its charge yeah, rate, right. they look to replace it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so. the old ones don't have to be scrapped or what have you. They Correct. don't have to be recycled. These at seventy percent, that be would be way phenomenal more in your in your yes. house. Yeah, tough getting it in a door, but but <laughs> into the basement, I should say. But still, uh, a really good idea. Well, and one of the other things, and and I saw it at your place was the Tesla. I think it's the Model Y, yeah. where the battery box cover is the floor. Yeah, exactly. And to me, we can mold that without any problem. Yeah. That's yeah. no issue whatsoever because SMC, we mold it. It's not a bunch of weldments. That's the exciting. Everybody I talk to at the OEs, you know what the biggest issue is with a battery box? Leakage. Yeah, well, um, they and worry the, about it. They yeah. worry about it, but you look at all the, I got some samples in the back of some metal trays yeah. and they all have a lot of sealant and, you know, because they're right. multi-piece. Yeah, and, and they and they banana. They, yeah. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of that type of sealant and a lot of yeah. weldment, and mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into one of these battery trays. Yeah. So, yeah. so you could mold in like seat cross members. I can um, mold all that in. Whatever else. Yeah, you I can mold yeah. pretty much anything into that. Do you have any yeah. sections of this we could look at? Oh, that yeah, right section. over here. I mean, oh, we've got great. some of that, and we'll take you out back and show you the tools. But wow, so quite a selection. Mm, this is good. So this uh, this is the hand tool, then I it, guess that for... was our development tool, which truly was a development because it was 3D printed with the stainless steel material. Yeah, this it was is originally a... a bolt cutter. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, this is what's putting a lot of like I was in the tr I was in a I was a tool maker a long time ago, and um, this was the uh, this is this is the process we we're all scared to death about. Yeah, because once you got this. Why do I why do I need a tool? I, I just I can make it on a I can make well, it on a three D printer. There's companies making molds on three D yeah, printers. I am a, uh, yeah I, I I know that. Uh, yeah. We we made a mold that was three D printed. Yeah. But How many just, shots did you get out of it? Well, we were just using it for a vacuum form tool. Oh, oh vacuum form. Um, but what we'd like to do is be able to get to compression molded tools oh, yeah. or injection molded like tools. Like P20 or something? Yes, yeah. and, and maybe make some different inserts for locations, not the yeah. whole tool as that. Yeah. Did, so, did you have any data on, on like water, water um, what's the word I'm looking for? Intrusion. Intrusion. Yeah, this, yeah. this was Gas actually tested um, to uh, a meter underwater for an extended period of time. And then mm. it was also pressure tested and fire tested for thermal. Hmm. Well, if you're going it. for a bath at a meter, <clears throat> um, that uh, there's a whole bunch of other things that you're gonna have problems with uh, as opposed to the seal here. I just wanna quick yeah. show you, I know it just take a minute, but that 
pickup box, the Sport Track. This pickup box we bought on Craigslist. And if you notice, this had 300,000 miles on it. We bought the truck. And what's interesting, look at the hardware that's right behind where your hand is. Look on yeah. the other side of that. It looks like it was on the Titanic. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's been <laughs> submerged in, the, uh, in salt water or something. You can see here all the rust and um, I'm but surprised this thing is encroached. And by the way, this is kind of like, these things are made out of a kind of stain, like a cheap stainless steel. So when they rust, they've, they've, uh, they've been to hell and back. Well, they, this was in Michigan. <laughs> Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Welcome to Michigan. But if you look at the box, it doesn't look bad. It was 16 yeah. years of use. Right. And, you know, 300,000 miles. Well, this uh, looks a lot. And I'm going to tell you why the uh, why everybody got rid of it. It's because of the draft angle. Correct. They said they didn't want to do it because we're losing all that pickup box and no one will buy the car. If we have that draft angle, no one will buy it. Obviously, somebody bought this one. Well, but, we, um, the Honda or... Hi, this even looks the same. We put the little bump in here yep. for the 2x6. For the yep. yep, correct. And the, uh, the next generation of this was a multi-piece, which I don't have here, to eliminate the issue that you're talking about. That's what yeah. you see even on this box here to get the side walls and maximize that out. But at the um, end of the day, if you put this in, we made it so that that was, uh, the dimension from here to there was four, four feet. So if you put a plywood or whatever in the correct. top section, you could get what you needed to get. You can't get down here anyway because you got the wheel wells in the way. Yeah. I couldn't, I had really, People that get ahead, I've said this about a million times, maybe I shouldn't do it anymore, but if you want to get ahead and you're in a big company, all you got to do is say no. Yeah. If you say no to everything, you'll never make a mistake and you'll look like a champion. <laughs> so, um, and that's what this guy did. He said no a lot. What's the minimum draft angle you can get on this process? Well, it depends on the depth. So yeah. that, I think we were right around five, five degrees, five degrees for this. Uh, that, that, um, yeah. And depending on the right. depth of the sidewalls, and we have a similar situation on the Tacoma. You can see the same thing for the boards there. Mm. And it also depends on the grain that you have in oh, there, yeah. too. Yeah. So different grains will dictate a different draft. Yeah. But these are one-piece boxes, and we've yeah. been... We've shipped over three million of the Tacomas already. Um, and now we're doing That's the Tundras number. down in Texas. And then we even did a GM. This is a carbon fiber. This was a prototype. You notice it's got the GM bow tie still in it. But hmm. the actual production one that's in production today that you can buy is a GMC. It's an option for the Carbon Pro box. Hmm. And so we make this as well. So this is a two-piece, right? So it's multi-piece. Three, yeah, at least three pieces. You can see it's their oh, sides, yeah, yeah, yeah. front. It's, yeah. it's a multi-piece box, which is glued and mechanically attached. This yeah. was one of the first ones we did. The rest are doubt. We make them out of our Huntington, uh, Indiana facility. Yeah, I, if you can do it in one piece, I'm in all day long. When you start looking at multi-piece, um, it's... Was this dictated like by tool, maximum tool size or something yeah, like well, that? Yeah, well, it was... It was dictated wow. by the material and the process because yeah. this was a thermoplastic carbon fiber material. We call it Cerebo. Uh, very, very tough material, um, almost bulletproof. It's somewhat expensive, but what, what GM wanted to do was exceed anybody else on the strength of their pickup box. Mm. Hmm. But the reality is an SMC box will meet the requirements for yeah, what you Yeah, as far need. as I'm concerned, if I was going to fool around, say, if I, well, we did, we suggested it to, uh, to Ford on the, uh, on the Ranger, um, and it showed a giant reduction in cost and a reduction in weight, and, uh, but, oh, well, it got a sloping side. Well, you can't get past the wheel wells anyways. What difference yeah. does it make? Oh, no, we can't do it. No one will ever buy the car. And well, like I say, no, say no and win and get promoted. Yeah. And that's actually the short deck. We make a long deck for that as well. Yeah. Well, again, it's, uh, if, if, if you use the smaller trucks, smaller trucks, small bucks is, uh, I think yeah. it's the old big bucks, big trucks. 
But just like yeah. you were pointing out, you you know where we talked about different thicknesses, we're able to mold in. You look at the rib design in the yeah, back. Yeah, exactly and right. Like in here, there's areas and, that are 12 millimeters thick. Yeah. The rest of the box is three and a half millimeters thick. But the big thing here is, from a total accounted cost standpoint, I don't have brackets. I don't have clips. I got, I can I can mold in the things that I need and want so that I don't have to add extra bits and pieces, and uh, that's. That's kind of like what we tried to sell, but it didn't work. Well, the tooling for this, the tooling and capital was about a quarter of what they were going to spend for a steel yeah. box. Well, steel, when you start stamping this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's the long bed kind of one piece as well? Yes, the yes. long bed is one piece as well. Hmm. Oh, very good. Let's have a look at the factory. Let's uh, go on out in the back where the toy shop is. So anyway, uh, Hugh, thanks for giving us a tour and whatnot. My pleasure. I thought we'd maybe stop here and uh, you can talk a little bit about what you're doing on the, on the Wrangler. Yep. Um, I, I had lots of these when I was a kid. I started at maybe 13 and um, I just switched to a Rivian. Uh, but, uh, but anyways, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're, um, what you're doing on this vehicle? Yep. We, uh, we, we've been supplying uh, the roof for a number of years and models now. Um, we make the uh, two-door, the four-door hard top, the removable hard top, um, which includes the freedom panels. Uh, we paint them in 11 different colors. There's usually two spiff colors every uh, year too that you notice they might have a yellow or an orange or something like that. That's Stellantis's spiff colors, but we supply like the Jeep, we also supply the Jeep truck. And then even for the convertible version, we make the SMC parts for that as well. This is our largest project that we have. Um, we're working on developing a new material for this. Uh, we've already showed you, I think, the freedom panels with a honeycomb type material, um, which will make it lighter and slightly less expensive as well, mm -hmm. um, because we can do this by thinning out the SMC and then having a honeycomb inner panel on it. Um, so with that, we're looking to change the whole roof assembly for this, mm -hmm. which will not only make it lighter, less expensive, but it's also stiffer with the honeycomb right. and acoustically it's better as well. Yeah. That's one of the options we're presenting to Stellantis right now. Uh, for their next gen if they ever change this Jeep because <laughs> it's yeah. still running and running great right now. Yeah. So this we're really happy to have this work with us what, right what now. What is the honeycomb material? The honeycomb is, is cardboard. Mm. It's a cardboard yeah. honeycomb. Um, it's significantly lighter and stiffer with a uh, basically just a uh, resin that we spray onto the material and then an SMC outer. We also can do thermoplastic outers as well for that. Uh, the skins can be vacuum formed or it can be molded thermoplastic as right. well. The big thing is, is getting it lighter. I think you pointed yeah. out, it takes three men and a boy to lift the right. back of yeah. this thing and off. It's not just lighter, it's also stronger. And that's why honeycomb with SMC, that is what's used on aircraft. So on the 787, we put tons of, uh, honeycomb sandwich material inside that aircraft so we could keep it nice and light and, um, and also increase the stiffness. When I need to increase the stiffness, first thing I'm gonna reach for is honeycomb material and cardboard is m my favorite because quite frankly, it's plenty strong. It adds tons of extra, extra strength and balsa wood and uh, some of the other more uh, aggressive honeycombs cost a lot more uh, and, and quite frankly they they give you they don't give you as good of results so anyways what i'd like to do is thank you very much hugh for this uh wonderful tour uh paul uh, really thank you for uh for pulling us uh pulling us in here today so anyway thanks so much and uh thank you for watching 
Uh, stay tuned for more stuff from Monroe Live. Thank you. Thank you.